over the excitement of Tottenham releasing the key information earlier that Tottenham will move in to the brand new stadium this season and it will be next month. Uh, the opening game, the opening Premier League game will hopefully be against Crystal Palace or Brighton. It all depends on Brighton's FA Cup tie. Now, in order to achieve a formal safety certificate for the fixtures at the new stadium, the club do require to hold a, uh, a minimum of two test events with increasing levels of attendance. Now, the two test events will take place on the 24th of March, which will be an under-18 game um, against Southampton. Uh, so it'll be Tottenham under-18s against Southampton under-18s uh, on the 24th of March with a 3pm kickoff. Uh, how fantastic it will be for those youngsters to uh, to walk out um, in that stadium bowl for the very, very first time. It will be at half the capacity. Uh, of course, the, the capacity at the stadium is 62,062. Um, there will be an attendance of around 30,000 for that game. Um, I doubt the, uh, the under-18s have played in front of that many people as well, so one hell of an experience for them. Now, the second test event um, will be held at the stadium on the 30th of March. That will be a Legends game, and that will be a half-past-five kickoff. Um, so if Spurs do receive the um, required safe certificate. They've agreed with Crystal Palace and Brighton that they would actually play the first Premier League game before a Champions League game. Now, this is the key. Um, and I don't think that the, either club are getting enough credit here. Now, the club have actually worked with um, the Premier League and UEFA, uh, but most importantly, they have worked with Crystal Palace and Brighton in order to make this happen because um, it wasn't scheduled to be like that. Um, if Brighton win the FA Cup game, um, you know the next Premier League game would have been Huddersfield. Uh, but if Tottenham had drawn at home for the first leg of the quarterfinals, um, UEFA wouldn't, allow, uh, wouldn't have allowed it because they had needed to have played a Premier League game there first. So Crystal Palace and Brighton uh, deserve a lot of credit. They've worked uh, with Spurs, they've worked with the Premier League, and they've, uh, they've given the go-ahead for, for either team to play Spurs, whatever happens. Um, so both clubs have been extremely understanding and cooperative, and I think that um, both clubs you know, deserve a pat on the back and... Uh, you know, a big thank you uh, from every Tottenham fan. Um, so if Brighton do win the FA Cup tie against Millwall, uh, it, w it means that we do play Crystal Palace on Wednesday the 3rd of April. Now that is another thing I was told a number of times by a number of different people uh, that Tottenham never ever intended to open the stadium uh, midweek. It was always going to be on a weekend. Now in order for us to play a Champions League game at the new stadium, um, they have swapped a few things around and... Uh, if Brighton win the FA Cup tie, we will play Palace for the first game at the new stadium on Wednesday, the 3rd of April. Now, if Brighton lose the FA Cup tie against Millwall, we will open the stadium against Brighton um, on the weekend of the 6th and 7th of April. Uh, that is subject to the uh, Champions League scheduling, obviously. Um, and that would mean that we would then play Crystal Palace on the 23rd or 24th of April that weekend. Um, so again, I can't I can't say it enough. Uh, you know, Palace and Brighton, um, you know, fantastic. So uh, thank you very much to to both of them. Um, now that does mean um, that whatever game we open against, it does mean that Tottenham will play um, in the new stadium this season five times, five Premier League uh, times, and they will be against Crystal Palace and Brighton. Obviously, we've just spoken about that. Huddersfield, West Ham and Everton. Now, um, I think, in my opinion, you know, I know I'm going to be biased. I'm a big Spurs fan. I'm going to be biased. But the atmosphere, everything that is going to happen at that brand new stadium, everybody's going to be extremely happy. Everyone can't wait to get in there. Um, the emotion of it all, um, the fact that we have played at Wembley for so long, um, I think everyone's emotion will just come out. Everybody who don't normally sing perhaps will sing during these games because the atmosphere. Um, as I said earlier in another video, you know, I've been into the stadium, been very lucky, been in there um, five times. And every time I've gone in, people's face, and I just love to see it now. I just, you know, love to people watch as people come through and just 
look around the, the fantastic arena that we have. Um, it is just a, a larger, much better version of White Hart Lane. Of course, we all loved White Hart Lane. You know, it was our home for uh, 118 years. And uh, of course, it was the first place you go, the first place we've, we've all gone and um, and watched matches there. And we've we've been very lucky to have some um, some great nights and some great times at White Hart Lane, which we will all treasure. But this is just a, a bigger version of that. And um, the place is just incredible. I can't I can't speak uh, highly enough of it. Um, so the the fact that we're going to play Palace, Brighton, Huddersfield, West Ham, Everton, I think that actually we're going to get five wins there. I really do because I think that the the team will automatically um, adapt to to such a surrounding. I don't think they will be used to something so strong. You know, I visited Dortmund um, the other day and did a tour there, and uh, the noise in in the yellow wall. Um, I think that ours would be a lot better than that. Um, it is certainly uh, bigger when uh, when all of the seats are in when all of the seats are in uh, Dortmund's um, yellow wall end. Um, it holds fifteen thousand fans. Now ours will hold seventeen and a half thousand fans, but the atmosphere needs to be electric, and I'm sure it will. I think that every every single stand will uh, will be singing. Uh, you know, certainly for the for the first well these five games. I think the atmosphere will be electric and, uh, you know, I think that that, that that will rub off on the team and I think the team will, will get the results that we need. Um, anyway, going back to the test events. Now, um, the test events are actually going to be done by ballot process uh, for the test events. Now, they, they're obviously going to test the uh, ticketing systems and card activations. Um, and a really nice touch by Tottenham. Uh, love this. That all proceeds are going to go to the Tottenham Hotspur Foundation. Now, the Southampton under-18 match, the adult price is £5, the over-65s um, is £1, and the under-18s is £1. And as I said earlier, that will um, be of a crowd of around 30,000. Now, it's funny, a few people have messaged me saying, um, do you think it will be full? Do I think it will be full? I think that um, a lot of people are going to struggle to get a, a ticket, if I'm honest. Um, every season ticket holder... Um, is going to want to go to this event, definitely. And there are a lot more season tickets than 30,000, as we all know. Um, and that doesn't even include members. So um, I think that these tickets will be very hard to get hold of. And, uh, you know, I hope that I'm there and uh, cannot wait for, for any game. As I said, um, familiarisation event, people... Uh, people were actually in tears. You know, they couldn't believe, you know, what we what we now have. Um, you know, and we've got this stadium for the rest of our lives. And, you know, it would just be an incredible, incredible event. Um, anyway, the, the, Legends, um, the Legends game, um, just six days later, um, they're, they're hoping for um, a crowd of 45,000. And as I said, these test events must be successful in order for us to get the certificate. Now, the Legends game, um, adult price is £10, over 65s and the under 18s is just £5. There's no booking fees on these tickets either. Um, the selection of tickets are also offered um, to members of the local community. Another very nice touch from Tottenham. Um, during my time doing the stadium updates over the last, well, nearly two years, um, you've seen a lot of people have been inconvenienced, um, a lot of noise, etc., disruption so a lot of the local people the local residents have been offered free tickets and i think it's a lovely touch um purely for their understanding and the disruption and everything which uh, i think is great it's very very well deserved and it's really nice to involve the local community as well now a lot of people um i tell you what the i can't cannot believe actually i've received hundreds and hundreds of messages tweets emails um, you name it uh, today, ever since the announcement, you know, a couple of hours ago. Um, and everyone's asking me, what am I going to do? Happy retirement. <laughs> it's funny, actually, because I never, ever set out to do stadium updates. It was a, I'm a big, big Tottenham um, fan and collector. And I was actually meeting somebody down um, at the stadium, uh, collecting something that, that somebody very kindly offered me uh, from White Hart Lane. And uh, I, I was standing there, White Hart Lane was being demolished, and I put my uh, phone up, as anybody would have done, um, started recording. Funny enough, the, the, the next week, very similar um, thing happened. And uh, people 
you know, put it up to YouTube, put it up to Twitter and Facebook and so on. And then people said to me, uh, love the video, look forward to next week's. And I thought, next week's? You know, how, there's not a next week's, but next week seemed to, seemed to come. Um, and the rest is history, as they say. And I've thoroughly enjoyed doing every single video. Um, it has been brilliant. I've met some amazing people along the way. Um, and it's really nice that I can call um, a lot of these people friends now. Um, of course, I did the stadium challenge um, last summer, which of course a lot of you supported, a lot of you sponsored me for. Um, very, very grateful. And uh, most of all, I'm very grateful for you know to to all of you for actually watching all of these videos. And um, someone said to me a couple of months ago, they said you when I told them that I did stadium updates, they they said to me, so let me get this right, you you actually go round the building site and you film this and people watch it. <laughs> which uh, it was quite funny actually the way the way that they said it um it was quite funny i thought well yeah but if you're a spurs fan it's in you um and it, and if you're a spurs fan watching your stadium grow um you know from the from the bottom to the top um it, it it's exciting and uh, i know i've got excited over um roof cassettes and panels and paving and uh, all of that but it's been brilliant it's been brilliant it's it's been lovely seeing every uh brick being laid and every roof cassette going in and yeah it's been great um but i will be doing um an update tomorrow um i've been asked um will i do an update um i'm particularly interested um tomorrow because uefa and FA, the fa were there today um inspecting and i've been told that it is extremely clear um everything is clear you can actually walk around the uh, the whole of the stadium uh there was no builders on site today either um, because of the inspections. Um, so it will be interesting to to uh, to see what uh, you know what that's like. And uh, of course, the the first test event is not that far away, um, only a couple of weeks away. Um, but when you say what am I going to do? Um, I'm I'm going to do what I've always done, and that is follow my club to death. Um, love Tottenham Hotspur, always have done. Um, always at you know even at school uh, as a young boy always spoke about Spurs and sometimes the teachers actually uh, pulled me out of class and said uh, you know you, you stop talking stop talking and uh, one teacher in particular pulled me out of the class and said uh, right okay talk talk about Spurs now um, didn't think that I would do it in front of the class and and I told them all about the match and who scored and who's our top goal scorer and you know various facts about history and the teacher wasn't very happy, but that's that, that's just me. You know, I love the club, always have done, and uh, I will continue to follow Spurs. Whether I do videos um, on a regular basis, I, I don't know, but we, we will see. But if there are any major changes at the uh, at the stadium, if the host if the hotel and the other tower blocks start to be built, or there's major changes at the station and so on, um, then I might cover those in future videos. It just depends if people carry on watching them then obviously I'll be very happy to do them. But um, I would like to, you know, say a, a heartfelt thank you to everybody who has uh, supported either the videos or my charity challenges or anything else I've done. Um, earlier I mentioned that today is the nomination day for the Football Blogging Awards. Um, and I know a number of you have voted uh, for me for that, which, uh, you know, overwhelming support again. Um, but... The stadium will always be um, a part of me and, uh, you know, it does feel like a, a great bit of history uh, that I've been a part of and it's been, you know, great following it. Um, but it will always feel very close anyway. And uh, for those of you who think I, I talk about panels too much, perhaps I do. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed the video. Come on, you Spurs.